All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm finally gonna do it. I'm gonna give pixel art a proper go. Now granted, I've sort of done pixel art before, but not proper pixel art. I mean, there's a long time, I think it was like three years ago, I did a pixel animation challenge, trying to do pixel art animation. Aside from, I guess, the bead video, which looked like pixel art, and I feel like is constructed in a similar way to how pixel art is constructed, I haven't done proper pixel art. That's also not true because any digital art is technically Pixel art. Pixel art is a form of digital art created through the use of software where images are edited on the pixel level. There are different saving and compression modes. There's isometric, non-isometric, blah, 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 blah. Let's just jump straight into getting inspired. DeviantArt. Oh, there we go. This, this is the sort of thing that I actually, when I see pixel art, I think is really cool. These environments in particular, I mean, obviously that's a traditional art environment. The house here by artist RGB Fumes. And then when you compare it to this one, again, by the same artist, really talented, a very different style and obviously very limited in scope as far as how you can create it. A lot less detail, but some find the simplicity of pixel art and especially the nostalgia I think you get looking at it because it takes you back to Game Boy games and 8-bit and 16-bit games on the computer. Pixel art is one of those really cool ways where when it's used effectively really does make use of minimalism and aesthetic and nostalgia to just make something really pretty. Also, DeviantArt, I'm reminded, is a very very strange place at times. I feel like exploring the dark, weird places on DeviantArt should be a video on its own. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do I dare? <laughs> oh my god! Ooh, that, okay, that's for another time and place. I want to see what is a good introduction to pixel art and also how to make a great pixel art character or environment. I really love that isometric style, so I'll dive into a bit of that. But as this video is my proper dive into pixel art, I want to see what proper pixel artists use. What are the pixel art industry standards or the community go-tos that would be beneficial to learn about and try out today, which is why I'm excited this video is sponsored by Skillshare because they have some pixel art courses, so I'll have a bit of a guide in hand in that way. And the benefit is, as there are a variety of classes, they also show using a variety of programs on how to make pixel art. Now, if you haven't checked out Skillshare, they have over 30,000 classes in illustration, drawing, design, and more. They are a long time friend of the channel. So if you are interested in developing one of the skill sets that you have that you want to improve on or learning something new, I encourage you to check out Skillshare and to do so, they have actually provided you with two months of free premium Skillshare membership. So I'll put the link in the description. Go check them out for free for two months. There are many, many thousands of other courses on Skillshare from business to illustration to how to build an Instagram follow to how to edit and use lighting, to how to do pixel art. They have a great way of participating in classes and getting feedback from your fellow students to really enable you to engage in the learning process. And I'm hoping that you enjoy going on the journey with me. So in getting started, I followed a course by Matthias called Pixel Art Fundamentals Create Pixel Art for Games. He outlines the fundamentals in a really clear way, so it was really, really useful to follow along with. Now, most useful was how to set up Photoshop as a pixel art tool by changing some parameters to make the process easier. However, if you want to learn pixel art and you don't want to pay for Photoshop, there are plenty of artists and communities who recommend things like Critter, and there are other courses on Skillshare that teach using those programs. And of course, as mentioned, there are some other free online pixel art tools. Now, I followed along with Matthias's demonstrations of the basics from drawing straight lines on any angle to understanding anti-aliasing and the basics of flat shading and diffusing hard edges, slightly softening some shading or harsh edges. And then I followed along with the part about dithering, which is, it turns out, a way to use two different colors to mix different densities of patterns of those two colors in various pixels to make it look like they're blending to a certain extent. And depending on the density of the pattern, it also of course affects how strong the color looks or how much towards one color it looks like it goes. So this can be used to create some cool gradient effects or to soften the edges of some shading. Now it's worth mentioning this because I did follow along and do the dithering that he demonstrated in the video, which was really worthwhile because it definitely came in useful later, especially when putting together my final artwork. Now towards the end of the lessons, he demonstrated how tile sets work and his class project was to participate by making a tile set and a character of your own. So I thought I'd join in, I rolled up my sleeves and I got stuck into it, starting off with an isometric grid. Now there are plenty of different ways to present 
pixel art environment, from top down to orthogonal or planimetric. However, I've always found isometric game art to be super satisfying, be it games like Roller Coaster Tycoon or the early version of The Sims. However, I think my appreciation for it probably stems back to my obsession back in the day with the Diablo games, Diablo 1 and 2 especially. And with the recent announcement and trailers for Diablo 4 having just come out, I thought it would be fun to attempt a tile set and character inspired by Diablo, imagining what the game might have looked like if it were developed for the SNES. Now I figured the best tile set would be some sort of a dungeon and the task of the project was to create two tile sets and to create border tiles that blended between the two. So in line with my theme I chose the stone dungeon floor to blend with the lava rivers of hell. Now I started off going nice and easy on myself basically following the isometric grid I initially drew and tweaked the patterns until I had an organic looking randomly alternating tile set and it's worth mentioning having two views visible was absolutely absolutely crucial. As you can see, I had the repeated pattern constantly zoomed out and referenced on the left while I focused on the super zoomed in pixely canvas and every time I saved, the zoomed out version would refresh and I would constantly see what worked and what didn't. Next came the lava and I followed a similar method but this time I sort of drew a wavy grid for the lava flow referencing my isometric grid lines so that I had something to anchor myself to, specifically where the pattern would stop and would loop with the other side of the tile. But otherwise I kept my lines really wavy and organic. Then I broke it up with some lines in between and generally just sort of made it a bit more flowing and then it was time to get stuck into the shading to make it look as lavery as possible. Next, I needed to create a bunch of transition tiles from the stone to the lava. And first, I needed to figure out how the patterns would collide. I started playing with the sort of a cliff overhanging drop over the lava as if the floor were floating over the lava. But in the end, I opted for more of a river look with the edges of the bricks visible and slightly tipping down into the river of fire, which allowed me to create some nice contrast. Dark shadows on the side of the bricks with the earth underneath and some sharp, cool orange yellow highlights where the lava collides with the ground. Then I had to repeat the process with some other transitional tiles. Now, I was already nearing the end of day one on this project at this point, so I couldn't realistically do a transitional tile for every angle and side. So I decided to stick to the tiles that would allow me to create a pool of lava along the bottom of the image with two straight tiles and two curved tiles. And I just repeated the same process for each of the tiles from start to finish, just drawing from that brick stone ground as a base. And this was a pretty time consuming process but I actually really enjoyed it, especially because I just chucked on the original soundtrack to Diablo 2 to get in the mood. And oh my god, did I get in the mood. With the tile set finally at a stage I was satisfied with, I laid out the edge of a lava river in the dungeon map style and then got started on some props. Now, for this I followed a different course, namely making an item set in pixel art by Simon Sanchez on Skillshare, a short but sweet and straight to the point class which I followed closely when creating my first potion with some minor tweaks to suit my scale and the isometric view. <laughs> Then I moved on to trying to make a prop without any references. And of course, what would any RPG or dungeon be without the most important of all features, epic loot.
finally, with enough props and a play space to feel substantial, it was time to move on to the hero of our journey. And I started off with a silhouette first, facing the treasure, but the angle was a bit awkward and I pretty quickly realized that making a hero facing away from us would be kind of lame. So I tweaked him to be facing down. And then after refining the silhouette and adding blocks of color, I got stuck into the shading and coloring, highlights and finishing touches. Or I guess you could say uh, finishing torches. <laughs> you, you get it? <laughs> Cause he's it's, it's holding a torch. <laughs> Oh my, it is truly dark in hell, and very spooky. But hey, check this out, there's epic loot! Hooray! So here it is, this is my finished pixel art creation. I'm really proud of this. The crazy thing is, and I only just realized this, this is super zoomed in. This is what it looks like at 100%. I guess when you work on a per pixel basis, you forget how small everything is. Now I did compose it to be like an image. I wanted it to feel like a final scene or part of gameplay or whatever, but because I took inspiration from Diablo and that obviously has a very sort of vignetted aesthetic and a very dark tone, it ended up sort of sapping a lot of the clarity and color out of the, uh, the actual part. So I set separately laid out all of the parts there. Just so you can see the tiles I created individually, the little props over here, and then the character himself. Now, I actually wanna save this and submit it. I spent so long in this, I feel like I need to put it out there. So I wanna blow this up, but if I do this just at a guess, let's say 1000 pixels and by the default expansion settings, you can see it sort of starts to look a bit fuzzy. But I'm gonna use a bit of logic here. I'm gonna multiply the size by Four, in theory, that means one pixel will turn into four pixels. Math. Yeah. And though it's still fuzzy, if I set quality from bicubic to nearest neighbor, look at that, nice and crisp expanded pixel art. That actually worked perfectly. I've learned stuff today. Now this was the class that I spent most of the time in and followed the most to get the result I had because it taught me about backgrounds and characters. So let me go ahead and submit my project. Diablo from the SNES era. Let's just frame my image. There you go. Boom. Oh, hey, that's my first project submission. Check this out on my, on my Skillshare profile. You can see aside from the classes that I've taught, which I highly recommend you check out. Down here, we got my projects. That's my first project. I am way too happy with how that turned out. That was really fun. I'm gonna go ahead and heart my own project. Cause sometimes a little self-love is important. Not in the way you, your mind just went. I make this weird, oh God. There's a lot of satisfaction in sharing and uploading a project that you're proud of. And I haven't done that much in the videos where I've participated in Skillshare classes. So I want to try and do that a little bit more. If you want to see my progress and projects in Skillshare or future courses I might release, you can follow me on Skillshare while you're down in the description. And once again, while you're down there, there are two months of free premium Skillshare waiting for you to enjoy. I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And I want to thank you for watching it. If you enjoyed this video, please like it so other people can see it and see the, uh, the whole fun experience of making the pixel art that we did today. And of course, subscribe for more fun with art, creativity, and all sorts of shenanigans. There are more videos over there, which you might enjoy. I recommend checking them out, but that's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later.